Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our colloquium for week two of this semester. I'm very pleased to introduce Professor Masahito Hasegawa from Kyoto University, who will be speaking about trismonoidal categories and semantics of computation. Uh, Professor Hasegawa obtained his PhD in computer science from the University of Edinburgh. He is currently a theoretical computer scientist working at the Research Institute for Mathematical Sciences at Kyoto University. Uh, before I hand it over, I just want to remind everyone that we will be recording this talk. We will open up for questions at the end, at which point, please feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, with that, thank you again, Professor Hasegawa, for, for being here. It's all yours. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm very pleased to, to talk in front of you um, like this, and especially on this topic for this audience, because <laughs> I know, yes, yeah, it's, it's, I was asked to give and talk for general mathematical audience, but at the same time, I know that there are, there are experts on this topic in the audience. That's, it's a bit, I feel a bit nervous, but I, I try my best. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I start. Oh, just a moment. Yes. All right. So, because this is talk for uh, mathematics people, I start with some mathematics. That's that should make sense, I hope. Um, so I start with comparing some mathematics and some computer science um, topics. So here I start with some uh, typical problem in topology. I'm um, just not theory. Just people just ask if two nodes are, are the same uh, in some reasonable way. And yes, that of course, um, there's some well established um, uh, tools for such. Uh, problems. So, so people study um, some mathematical uh, quantity that's um, invariant under some continuous deformations of such nodes, or such geometric stuff. So that's called not not invariant. That's quite a very established area with long, good tradition. Um, and similarly, for computer scientists, actually we do the same. Uh, we do ask. We are given two programs, and we want to know uh, if two programs behaves in the same way in some good sense, and there are some many different uh, senses, but uh, yes. But anyway, so again, for which um, we usually study some mathematical uh, quantity um, but, um, invariant and uh, some exclusion of programs. That's the basic idea of um, so-called um, the denotation semantics of program languages. So basically I'm working on this stuff for many years. Yes, and and to make uh, the comparison easier, actually, I, I like, so today I use category theory for relating these two um, research areas. So, so first, um, both um, invariants and semantics can be discussed in some, well, some quite general um, um, framework that's called functorial semantics, in which, um, for example, um, actually, I, I will, I will add, uh, explain more later. But uh, um, for example, in the in not theory, um, we can construct some nice category of tangles, and that have some nice structure, so-called ribbon category or total category, and so then so we can pick up some nice uh, ribbon category, um, often coming from some quantum groups and so on. Then we give some structure preserving factor between them. That's actually the same as um, giving invariance of um, nodes or tangles. And similarly, in computer science, so we are interested in some uh, programming languages and it's um, some formal systems, something like some called, called lambda calculus. So again, from some such uh, nice calculus, we can construct some nice category and that's has some stru nice structure, typically some Cartesian closed structure, for example. And then we pick up some nice Cartesian closed category and take some um, structure preserving functor. Then we get um, semantics of the lambda calculus in this way. So, so more or less we can um, um, handle um, invariance and semantics in a uniform way uh, for the uh, tradition of functorial semantics starting from uh, Lobel. Yes, so that's, that's my basic uh, starting point. So 
the invariance and semantics are more or less the same as giving some nice structure preserving functors. Right. Yes, and, and more on some mathematics in the topology side. So there's some nice area of uh, called quantum topology. That's, uh, and also some, some stuff about uh, TQFTs. That's uh, very nice stories. Um, categorical structures, um, braided or balanced model categories, ribbon categories, also called uh, total model categories, and modular tensor category, and so on. That's quite, uh, sophisticated structures, and and some good motivating examples came from um, representation, some quantum algebra, uh, quantum groups, uh, which give lots of some nice invariants or nodes or mastery manifolds in very uniform systematic way. So that's quite well studied, really. Right. Uh, actually, many of my colleagues in Kyoto was working on this area. Right. So um, here just, <laughs> uh, just I pick up some books in my bookshelf. Um, I, 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 I don't pre pretend I, I, I understood this, <laughs> all these topics, but, uh, they, are, but they are quite enjoyable. And yes, especially about this one, it's explicit. It's, it's a book by David Yetta. Uh, so he's, it gives some factorial way of doing such uh, not so this anyway and uh, returning to my idea so again it has long history of, of more than 50 years now but we have semantics of primary language just using some um, nice structure typically involving some fixed points of constructions the point is that so we have we are very much interested in some recursive programs. So recursion means some program might be defined uh, using the program itself. So sort of some self-referential or circular definition here. So here's a so typical, uh, very easy recursive program. Um, that's, let's just do some summation. That's, so sum of x is, if x equal is zero, then it's return just zero. But otherwise, um, uh, it calculates x plus um, sum of uh, x minus one. So it uses uh, its own result recursively. Right. So, so that, that's quite typical uh, in uh, recursive programs. Then the point is that anyway, uh, the semantics, well, the meaning of such program should be understood as some uh, fixed point of some uh, functional, non-recursive functional. So here, I, 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 this F stands for some um, uh, functional or some, some meta program that takes some program as argument and returns another program. Yes. But if you put um, some uh, this small F, then you get this original definition. So it's actually we conclude that um, some is a fixed point of this uh, F, right? So in this way, we can, um, capture the essence of recursive programs in using some nice fixed point operators. And this approach, fixed point semantics, and uh, usually based on domain theory, um, has been quite uh, successful. And this is um, quite essential part of um, our program language study for uh, over uh, 50 years. So again, I picked up some nice books uh, uh, from my bookshelf, that's the old great books. Um, like this, and some, some, some quite category, some not so, but they contain some good body of such fixed point semantics. Anyway, and then this is a, a topic of today. So today um, I like to talk about um, traced model categories and that were, uh, were um, introduced by uh, Joya, Street and uh, Verity in the nineties, yes. That's um, monodial category. That's um, there are several ways of characterizing this. Um, that's short. In short, that's full sub monodial categories of some ribbon category. Um, and that's yes. This is a paper. Yes. Sorry. But anyway, um, but the uh, uh, more um, intuitively, but trace monodial category can be understood as some monodial category uh, together with some functions called trace operator and um, satisfying some um, axioms, um, which by intuitively it takes some um, morphism, 
from A tensor X to B tensor X and sends it to some morphism from A to B. So intuition is that we connect this output X to input X, we'll get some sort of feedback here. This, yes. So, so it, 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 also it was related to some um, ribbon categories and as shown in the Java State Variety paper. But, uh, but soon after that, um, trace model categories get uh, got uh, lots of attention from computer scientists and found many uh, fruitful applications. So just to pick up a few, so that's the, fix, the relation to fixed point semantics of recursive programs that I mentioned. So some people, um, myself and Martin Highland, many other people involved in this. And also some cycle data structure networks. Actually, there were some work, uh, some pioneering work by Stefanesk. So he was developing um, some models of uh, cyclic networks uh, before in trace model categories were introduced. But uh, anyway, so there's some theory. And also there are some um, other topic called geometry of interaction. Um, that's originally developed by GRF using some operator algebras, but uh, soon well, well, uh, some people like Abramsky and Highland noticed that you know, it's not nothing about operator algebra, but it's better to take some uh, good categories with fixed points or some iterations. That's, yeah, that's um, quite successful idea um, yes, and many, many more. This, and actually, the original paper by Jawai Street Beatty um, already mentioned some such possibilities of developing such research directions. And they actually, in the references, um, the paper as a book by um, Blom and Eshik on iteration theories. That's, that's a lot about um, uh, fixed point semantics. And also, Girard's uh, paper on geometry interaction, that's what I already mentioned. But however, um, well, my guess is that. The actual influence of trace model categories have been far wider and deeper than were initially expected by the authors. That's, that's, my, <laughs> that's my, my feeling. Um, well, maybe you, you knew. But, yeah. Anyway, so the topic, the plan is as follows. Um, so first I recall some basics of trace model categories and the related structures and some basic results, some examples of this. Yes, and then I, I took some use of trace model categories in semantics of computation or program language. So especially I mostly talk about um, semantics of recursive programs and a bit about uh, geometry interaction and some other topics. Also, I, I like to explain that trace categories and such structures um, quite useful. So also connecting uh, two areas, um, uh, topology and uh, low dimensional topology and also such um, computer science. And if time allows, um, I would I, I love to uh, ask, say something about some open issues um, that I got stuck for, for several years now, uh, making some now rather little uh, progress, but if time allows, yes. So here is my, my, my personal view of so history. It can be wrong because I, was, I wasn't a researcher in 80s, but anyway, so there are some two different um, uh, unrelated area of areas of some low dimensional topologies and the semantic computer uh, computation. Um, yes, but uh, then, but soon people noticed that well, we have some good categorical structures for doing such quantum topology. Um, yes. And also there's some progress in this area. And then after we have trace model categories, now we have some sort of common story for both the, uh, areas. Yes. And uh, well, so and my, and I believe that, well, they're unrelated, but now related. And then now we have something common. If even we have some co something common. Uh, if if the, I have time, I, I, I love to ex explain that there can be some, some intersection between um, such quantum topology and some fixed point semantics and so on. That's, yes, and that's uh, thanks to um, threat model categories and ribbon categories. Right. Yes, so I first start some mathematics. Um, I assume that 
um, you, you are familiar with some base categories theory and then also know something about uh, monodal categories or maybe just some um, linear algebras and this uh, tensor products and so on. But anyway, so it's monodal categories or tensor categories, just categories equipped with some tensor product that's by factor satisfying something um, and some special, some unit object and some some suitable um, uh, natural isomorphism satisfying um, good coherence property. Like this. And, uh, and it is uh, quite handy to use some sort of graphical language for storing diagrams to represent morphisms um, in one of the categories. So if you have some morphism from A1 tensor A2 tensor blah, blah, um, AM to uh, B1 tensor B2 tensor blah, blah, um, BN, then it can be drawn as some sort of uh, some some box. Who, um, so, so, so today I use I draw a diagram from left to right. Anyway, so it has um, m inputs and n outputs and so, so like this. And this is quite uh, handy to express some composition. Composition just sequential composition, and also the tensor product is just parallel composition. That's quite easy to handle in some cases. Yes, and that's quite well developed. Uh, theory of string diagrams. And so in this, using string diagrams, um, I explain some structures on one of the categories. So first I talk about um, braiding. That's quite important in this talk. So braiding just swapping um, two elements, but uh, because but we do care, um, we, we want to separate the swapping and its inverse. This, so I use some notation for braiding here. So, so two lines crossing over or under, something like this. Yes, and they ask to satisfy some natural properties like crossing one line with uh, two parallel lines is same as crossing first and then another crossing, something like this. And it's, yes. So um, as the notation suggests, we don't assume that um, this braiding is uh, agrees with uh, its inverse, so because this are over and under crossing are separated in the notation. But actually, in many examples, especially in computer science, they tend to agree, so that they are called symmetry. Symmetry is just swapping things um, without caring which is over, which under, like this. Yeah. Yes. So braided model categories are model category with um, braiding and symmetric model category um, model category with symmetry. That's as the name suggests. And uh, one more last thing. Um, this is also um, it is, this this can't be uh, this is another structure called um, twist that can be avoided. Um, if we talk about twist model category, that's um, natural isomorphism. But it doesn't have to be identity. And here I use some some strange uh, twisting <laughs> figure for uh, this twist and its inverse. And it's supposed to satisfy this equation. This is says that we have two parallel uh, lines and we will uh, twist it yes, like this. But it's the same as um, um, uh, making small twists and also. Um, braiding these two strings in this way. This, so just, well, maybe you can physically test this. Um, so uh, pick up your, uh, some strings and, and if you so put two strings in this way and if you pull the strings from for left and right, then you get this situation. So we have these two lines uh, quite um, uh, tangled in this way, yes. So, so and we say that a balanced model category is a smaller category, a braided model category together with such twists. And actually many braided model categories equipped with twists. And uh, many natural model category equipped with uh, twists. And actually the when the twist is happen to be the identity, um, it's always identity, then the braiding just forced to be a symmetry because of this property. It is because this left hand side is becomes just identity and right hand side is just just um, braid followed by braid again, but it's forced to be identity. So just I said um in a balanced model category, this actually I for for 
because of my, my typesetting skill. So I just draw some line, but actually it's not just line, but it's sort of some frame tangles or ribbons. So it has some um, um, wide sound, so it can, so twisting is visible more or less. This, it's, just, it's not just simple strings, right? And um, yes, sorry for too many definitions, I hope, I, I suppose, but I, I just, and when I, I, I need to, the notion of duality in my character, just we have uh, the dual or vector space in uh, linear algebra. Um, we have duality here and uh, uh, dual of an, ob an object in the monoidal category is just um, another object um, together with some um, map, um, um, some unit to A tensor A star and another map from A star to A, something like this, star to unit. And that's, so I typically they are drawn by some, some sort of bend bending some wires in this way and this way, and satisfying that this natural uh, two equations. This, right. Okay, this is just special instance of um, adjunctions in category theory, like this. So, but that's quite important, especially if we want to interpret knots, uh, tangles in more categories. This. So a ribbon category, or also known as uh, total model categories, is a balanced model category in which every object has dual, and also this twist uh, for the dual of the twist is a, again a twist. This, this is, uh, this looks natural, but it doesn't follow from the uh, other, other actions, right? And in particular, ribbon category with trivial braiding and trivial twist, uh, I mean, the symmetric um, case is uh, well known um, and that's called um, compact closed categories. This, so compact closed categories, just ribbon categories are that um, twist is identity and um, braiding is a symmetry. This, yes. And just, I want to say that uh, why ribbon category important in topology and just justification is that the ribbon category are fully generated by a single object is actually equivalent to um, the category frame of tangles. So hence, um, if you pick up uh, any, uh, your favorite ribbon category, uh, you basically automatically get um, functor from this uh, free category. So it gives rise right to some uh, invariant of tangles. And if you happen to know uh, the lambda calculus, it's a sort of toy, toy function of language, the situation is quite similar because um, the CP type of the calculus gives like some free Cartesian closed category. And so hence uh, giving a Cartesian closed category uh, automatically gives some interpretation of um, the calculus. Yes. But anyway, so finally I introduced uh, trace, trace model categories. That's um, balanced model category. So it has um, braiding and twists. And together with some operator, as I mentioned in the introduction, so creating some feedback sort of, uh, together with some Ahukuhiris axioms. Uh, so, so for, for your refine, I just put some far axioms. That's, that's actually quite natural axioms. So today I give some slightly simpler definition than the original one. So first, um, the trace should be natural in that. So, so composing something um, before and after and taking trace is the same as uh, taking trace and then pre and post composing um, with H and K. That's quite natural. And also yanking is something. So it's, it's about uh, trace of braiding. That's why we create some twist. Yeah. So actually my notation of twist uh, came from this. This. And superposing is not so uh, difficult. Um, um, uh, parallel composing F with uh, this wire and then taking trace is the same as taking trace and then uh, parallel composing um, uh, this wire. And so finally this one might well, uh, be a bit complicated, but uh, it is quite natural because so it, it's, it's about taking trace uh, twice. So we take, uh, trace here and then another trace here, but it's the same as first, uh, pre and post composing some braidings on this inverse, 
uh, taking this trace and then another tra uh, trace. So just exchanging the order, order of um, taking trace just the same, should be the same like this. And actually the original axioms um, vanishing and sliding in the original definition can be derived from these axioms. So this why, so personally I prefer this one because it does, it's easier to uh, show uh, graphically. Anyway, um, so and uh, yes, the so final thing I need to say is that every ribbon category has a um, unique trace um, that's called, called canonical trace. So, so, so in ribbon category, we can define trace using the unit and braid and twist and co-unit in this way. And, this, this, and then we can check that this is a trace. And conversely, if you have, if you happen to have trace in ribbon category, well, with some uh, calculation, actually it should be the same as this. So it's just unique. So it for, so as a consequence, we have that any uh, monoidal full subcategory or ribbon category is the trace model category. And the very surprising result in the Joya Street Bait paper is that actually any trace model categories um, can be obtained in this way, in just, so they really are more than full subcategories of ribbon categories uh, because um, they show that so every trace model category uh, free face embeds in some uh, ribbon category and they give some explicit construction. I think I will talk about this later. But anyway, so hence any trace model category is a full submodal category of some ribbon category. Like this. Ah, so, but I, I, I guess, so, we need some definitions. Uh, sorry, sorry, we need some. We need, uh, and then we need some examples to live <laughs> to the real mathematics. So first, so as the name trace suggests, it, uh, the trace model category. Put the original example should be some the category of vector spaces and linear maps in which we can take trace as usual, like this. So. So actually it's a category of finite dimensional vector spaces known to be a compact closed category and has unique trace. And the trace is just given by um, the summation of the diagonal of the matrix, right? Yes, um, actually, we, so in this, in, in this case, actually we, are, we want some parameterized uh, or partial trace. So we need some additional uh, index here and there, but anyway, if we ignore this U and V and then, um, we have that just usual um, trace. Yes, right. And uh, very similar example is that it's the category of uh, sets and binary relations. That's quite popular in computer scientists. Um, that's also compact closed category. Uh, if we take tensor product to be just product of sets, like this, and it has again unique trace. So in this case, uh, in the, in, in the case of vector space, the dual is just usual dual space. But in the case of relations, um, the dual of a set is that itself. Yes. And for given relations, relation between A cross X to, uh, and B cross X, we can have, we have trace it's that's from A to B. That um, relates um, A, small A is related to small B. If and only if, there is some small x that a x is related to b x by r. So this, so actually, they're quite similar because so here we have some mention. We have here we have exist quantification, but uh, because in red we can't count um, uh, the multiplication. Um, we we can't count how many times they relate. So we just use existential quantification. But in speed, they are quite similar. Right, and for well. Uh, maybe this is a bit too much, but uh, so here I give, um, uh, I think it's a simple um, a ribbon category with uh, non-trivial braiding. This, so if you, so, so just fix some group and then we have some notion of cross G sets. That's standard in algebraic topology. Um, that's just that's, that's G set. So it's set together with group action and also have some another variation map from this X to G satisfying uh, this equation. So that's, so uh, the variation of um, this action is the same as taking this conjugate. This, and so and then we, as a morphism, we take some sort of um, uh, equivalent relation that, so two, so X and Y related 
means that um, the action that, that's that's stable under um, actions of um, group elements as well as so x and y have the same value. Yes. And then actually this category um, that I call a, a, a cross uh, cross rel G is actually a ribbon category. And that tends to product some natural definition of uh, group um, action and uh, variation. And it has non-trivial braiding and uh, twist because the braiding. So it's not just swapping X and Y, but actually we have some, yes. So some, some um, evidence that there's some overcrossing here or some undercrossing here like this. And for twist, again, it's not the identity. Um, X is related to uh, this, so the, the value of X uh, is put on X that's showing that. So it's more or less self overcrossing here. This, yes, and the duality is as expected. So it's the same uh, cross G set, uh, same G set, but uh, with inverse as a variation. Like this, the trace is the same as uh, in rel. So that means that the trace in this category is the same as given by this formula. So if R is an equivalent relation, then uh, this one it is also, and trace is also equivalent. Like this, that's, um, I think that's uh, one of the simplest example of uh, non-trivial ribbon category. This, right, I'm sorry. Um, it actually took, <laughs> it took a bit too much on this. But then, now, now I go into some uh, computer science here. And so I suppose that um, audience, the people, most people are not familiar with some stuff in computer science. That's, I just thought very, very basic stuff that I usually teach for undergraduates. Um, that's okay. So that's some very basic stuff from um, uh, fixed point semantics. So typically we use some ordered structures. So here today I taught use some omega complete uh, partial order. That's that's a partial order set uh, together with some list element, and also it has the least upper bound for the uh, omega chain. See like this. Yes. This. Hmm. So, so intuition is that bottom express some non-termination or some sort of well, non, there's no, no information. And then, so this ordering expresses as X0, X1 contains more information than X0, X2 contains more information than X1, or maybe X, um, X uh, uh, so X1 terminates whenever X0 terminates, and also X2 terminates whenever X1 terminates, something like this, yes. And um, uh, then a um, map between such uh, omega CPOs is uh, called continuous. If uh, it is uh, monotone, so it respects ordering and also it preserves the least upper bound of the omega chains. This, um, so it's called continuous so because well, actually we can regard omega CPOs as some sort of topological space and then we can give some uh, topological so Scott topology and then we have that these maps are continuous um, exactly when it is continuous for the topology. But anyway, so the very basic theorem in this topic is that um, any continuous map, end map has a least fixed point that's taken, given by uh, this least upper bound of the omega chain starting from bottom, then F of bottom, then F square bottom, and blah, blah, blah. That gives some um, omega chain, and then we take this least upper bound. That's actually the uh, least fixed point. So, so there can be many different fixed points, but this is the least one. And yes. yes. Um, and uh, so, so let uh, omega CPO be the category of such CPO, omega CPOs and continuous maps. Then the least fixed point operator gives rise to some sort of some uh, fixed point operator, actually a parameterized fixed point operator, um, sending some map from A cross X to X to something. Uh, for um, some map from A to X, just taking A as uh, small A as input and calculate the least upper bound of this map and well, it's small A just fixed. This, so it, it is so it is just taking calculate fixed uh, fixed point uh, with parameter a. This that's and uh, 
that um, so it's standard that this fixed point of satisfies uh, lots of nice equations. So first of all, it is, it uh, this calculates as a fixed point, and also it is natural in that this parameter it is natural in this parameter a, and this is dinatural in that um, f of um, the com the fixed point of g. Uh, GF is the same as fixed point of um, FG app, uh, uh, no, applying G to the fixed point of FG, something like this. Or for maps with two inputs, so we could take fixed point at once by supplying the same input. So this diagonal map. So and then so so F with this delta means that some, some map from X to X that supplying the same argument to F. Uh, then we take this fixed point, uh, but actually it's the same as uh, taking the fixed point for this right, right input and then uh, left input. So, so taking fixed point twice, uh, they are the same. That's called diagonal property. And actually, well, to be precise, um, for the last two, I just ignore the parameter A, but it can be put some, um, but just making some formula a bit complicated. And some the fixed point operators um uh, satisfying uh, these equations called a uh, convey operator um that's I think that's defined given by uh, Bruma Eschik the following uh, conveys uh, uh, old work like this and actually almost all natural fixed point operators in computer science um known to be comp uh, convey operators and natural ones not artificial <laughs> this and including this one um, in on omega CPOs. And, and also, I like to mention some yet an, uh, another interpretation of fixed uh, uh, recursive programs using some cyclic graphs, cyclic time graph rewriting. So, so this is a program that I mentioned, that some mention like this. This somehow I would uh, draw some picture for this. So this is a, it's a, it's a capital F is a function that I use um, before. So here I have, I want to apply this this is some of it, uh, this is sum, and this is uh, some input four. So applying sum to four is the same as, so first, so I use some cyclic graph here. And so this F is shared by two places that can be um, uh, copied more or less. And then we do some calculation here, but uh, this F is, is actually the same as putting it here. Um, so just just we have original um, uh, this cyclic sh sharing here and here, um, but uh, we we continue calculation just by um, following the definition of this uh, large F. So the point is that um, so in this reading, um, recursive code means just copying some some cyclic uh, sharing circular shared resource. So you just copy and use as many times as we need. So just so this these pictures more or less looks like knots or some or maybe trace like this. So that's also prompts um, suggests that well we could have some semantics of such situation using trace model category. This yes uh, okay here it's another uh, a bit complicated. I I don't go into this. this is lambda calculus with some cyclic sharing that's you can implement. Um, Recursion in, in many different ways, and just then they behave some different ways like this. So the point is that so in this here, this box is duplicated by this point. So, so that's unholding as a definition, and then continue some calculations and so on. This, but then these two, uh, these two uh, behave somewhat differently, and with um, this one is more efficient. This one is more um, a bit heavy. Just, this, but anyway, so I think the um, first result is that actually trace model categories captures uh, convey operators when um, the monoid product is actually Cartesian product. So, so, so this it's the the theorem that as a category a category with finite products is traced if and only if it has a convey of uh, fixed point operator. So, I mean, there's some bijective correspondence between trace on this uh, category C and also the fixed point operator on this category. And 
So types are a bit different, but uh, there is some easy correspondence between these structures like this. Yes. So, so as a consequence, um, um, lots of, well, actually most of categories used in fixed point semantics are actually traced. So the, omega, the category omega CPUs, for example, are traced, is traced. This. So in a sense, we, we are using traced model categories for over uh, 50 years yes, without knowing. <laughs> and also so thanks to trace, so we can go further in that we can generalize such fixed point semantics so that we can accommodate this kind of uh, cyclic sharing as well. That's, that's quite difficult to handle in, in traditional fixed point semantics. So here is um, my old work. That's, so I, I actually, I, I, don't, I don't go into uh, details of this, but uh, we have some uh, category uh, with final products, uh, some category, some monitor, uh, trace model category. Yes. The point is that everything here can be duplicated or discarded. Uh, with a problem, and everything here can be traced with um, so combining, and there's some some adjunction, monoidal adjunction between them, something like this. Then in such in this situation, we can somehow construct um, fixed point operator in this uh, category D, this of this form, this. So and the and the it, it can be implemented in this way, and this. So this more or less explains. Um, what's happening in um, psychic lambda calculus. So I just show off some um, rough idea here. So here is uh, uh, my definition of a fixed point of this F. So how it works, um, so first, because we have sharing, uh, but this dark side is lives in uh, Cartesian category. So everything can be du duplicated or discarded here. So, um, so because here is some, um, to, to so so this, this this part is shared by these two outputs. So just we duplicate so it's Cartesian category. So it's, it can be done, right? Yes. So we get this, and then because of uh, this dark one is a monoidal functor, um, a strong monoidal functor. So we can um, we can decompose again and again. We get this. Yes. Again, this dark area is in the Cartesian category. This, but anyway, so now we have something um, some, uh, some surrounded by some functors and they followed by a uh, coordinate of the adjunction. Um, but this is a monitor adjunction, so this we have we can rewrite this this way. And then we look at this. So it's some uh, yeah, unit of the adjunction surrounded by functor, and then we have coordinate. But because adjunction, it can be eliminated this way. So now we have some picture here. This, and using the action trace, we can uh, we can rewrite this way. Yes, this. But then now we are done because so this original part is here, and then we have. F here, so, so this is really the fixed point of F. So in this way, we can uh, implement uh, recursive um, computation created from cyclic sharing um, using trace and some monitor adjunctions. And there are some uh, applications, um, some because, because computer science is so impressed by um, trace and monitor categories, uh, people try to use them for language designs or some foreign language actually uses some syntax uh, motivated by traditional model category, but that's, well, that's, a, that's not my work. Um, anyway, um, okay, it's time. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I'm overrunning. Um, I should be quick. So far, so far, I, I like to mention something about um, geometry interaction. That's, there are, there are many different ways of explaining this, but uh, to me, it's something like this. So we have some situation, we have some um, um, bi-directional, um, information flow happening. So we have two processes. Um, so we have some, some uploading direction, some downloading direction, something like this. Yes. But uh, of course, if you have uh, derivative, maybe we can implement both direction without much problem. But, uh, but in just, just in monitor category, because so maybe it, this, this F should be implemented as something from left like this. So everything coming from left and 
going to write. Yes, and similar for this. So the question is on how to compose this F and this G. But it's difficult because so I love I love to connect this B plus to B plus and this B minus to B minus, but it can be um, it well, but it's then I, we usually we got stuck, we got stuck for this. But if you have trace um the interconstruction given by um Joy Street Betty actually solves this problem. So now for the positive uh, uploading side, um uh, we put we just use a composition, but for the, this negative or um, downloading direction, so this comes to first here and this this B minus connected to this B minus using trace and then it goes out like this. Yes. So this is the essential idea of um, the interconstruction. And uh, so using this construction, we can turn um, trace model category to some ribbon category. That's that, uh, that's called interconstruction because it's something like creating um, integers from natural numbers. It is, yes, because integers sort of um, pairs of natural numbers, modulo sum, right, we call it. it is, and actually, it is quite universal in that. So it is gives some left by adjoint to the um, inclusion of ribbon categories to trace categories because every ribbon category has a uh, unique trace. So there's some inclusion, but it actually this is a left by adjoint. And and this unit is from C to int C is that's free face. Oh, just like this. And so this is quite appealing to uh, all computer scientists. Um, uh, so actually, um, explain this in the symmetric case is quite very easy. But uh, as as done in the Joy Street Betty paper, the balanced case uh, involving non-trivial braiding is quite involved. Um, the details quite non-trivial. Um, so, for example, if you try to write down the ribbon structure, uh, or maybe the braiding of the, um, the inter uh, resulting uh, into category, then it can be quite difficult. It's, I think I took I took a few hours to calculate the inverse of the symmetry. Just, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. But anyway, so just um, uh, now I skip everything, but uh, just um, it has lots of applications. Invite age and here is some uh, very, uh, I think it's a quite neat ex example. That's so it's uh, some um, technique of um, called um, attribute grammars that's using compi compilation. That's the idea well, that for each function symbols um, in the past three, we associate some some small programs to calculate that's just some by um, some value or attribute of um, this stuff in bidirectional ways. But actually there's some bidirectional stuff and actually it can be explained using um, trace. This, yes. So this story was also developed using trace recently, like this. So, um, yes, I, I, I'm almost finishing. Um, So anyway, so we have trace model category that's Great and um, ribbon category that have some impact on quantum topology and also this kind of semantic computer science computation. But actually, some people, actually, my colleagues, <laughs> uh, some very good um, topologists told me that, well, okay, but uh, you are not using braid in proper way. So I think you are wasting category theory or something like this. Yes. But I, I do agree with him, but. Uh, um, but actually, it is possible to apply some ideas or techniques of um, quantum topology in in my setting uh, in the semantics. So, for example, I gave um, ribbon hopper algebra in some in the category level of um, binary relations using some quantum double and deriving some. Actually, the category um, of cross G sets I explained before was the result of this. Just yes. So we get non-trivial braiding. Uh, if starting from some uh, category familiar to uh, computer scientists, so so uh, in, indeed this in this category we can interpret we have non-trivial braiding and at the same time we can interpret some recursive programs. This and for example um, because this category has non-trivial reflexive object, so we can interpret um, some untyped braided uh, linear lambda characters in this uh, setting. That's, I think that's not possible in the traditional. Uh, final dimensional representation of some kind of quantum algebra. This, 
Anyway, so, uh, but uh, I must say that this is just quite mathematical development, but I, I do love to have some good application like uh, topo topological counter computation and so on. Like this. So, but anyway, the, the, my point is that well, now we have these two worlds are not, not quite unrelated. We can have some commonplace um, thanks to ribbon category and trace categories. Like this. So I think that now I'm finished. So there are some open issues and some question. It's a nasty question. When a monoidal category can be embedded in some trace category, some, something like this. That's still, I don't have a final answer. Some, some people develop some. So I said some some condition to which might ensure that model category embeds into some trace category, but they were not strong enough. So like this some some that's a sort of this, this is sort of question like embedding monoising groups, something like this. But uh, so this is this is more similar to the uh, case of monoids, but uh, it's not sufficient. And then Peter Senga showed me some such so some some another condition. So these two equal then imply these two equal something like this, but again this one not enough. Actually, I had infinitely many such equations to ensure um, it's uh, end up a better bit, but it's not. I think it's not finished yet. Um, also, there are some question of characterized mon uh, monads which lift to rest of the structures, and that's that, that's interesting because some recent development can hope monads. Um, Looks quite helpful, but uh, actually, so hope, hope monads lift uh, compact closed structure, uh, ribbons and so on. But uh, actually, there are trace lifting monads which are not hope monads, and also there's, there are hope monads which are not, which doesn't lift trace. So actually, the situation is more complicated. And so, we, with uh, Lume, I gave some, some progress, but it's not, uh, the general case is still open. And also, I'm, for years, um, some computer science was trying to um, develop some planar trace model categories so without using symmetry or braiding, but that seems quite difficult. Um, so this is picture, picture by uh, Peter saying it shows that. So we could have some something looks like trace like this, but this is actually not quite uh, trace. So can, can just, this can't be explained using some trace operator because actually we are taking something trace of not a morphism, something like this. So this is quite, so maybe we need to take trace to uh, that's a, two, two trace at the same time, something like this. And also we don't know what's a, what's a good interconstruction in the setting, so this. And also this is another nasty question, um, planar trace start -to categories. And so so some years ago, I, I've shown that um, any trace to symmetric start -to categories are actually compact close, but after well, 15 years <laughs> try, we uh, hadn't shown this, but uh, still we could ask the same for the planar case, um, but that's quite diff that's still difficult to me and actually, and honestly, I, I, uh, the, my, my proof for the symmetric case is also a bit complicated. Uh, well, it's, it's not quite conceptual. So I, I love the more um, um, and, uh, elegant proof for this, but I don't have things like this. But anyway, so it's now time to finish. So, so I'm sorry that I, I, I think I put too much topics, <laughs> too much materials in this talk. And, but anyway, um, but still I hope that um, somehow, well, you are convinced that um, trace model category is quite good, both for mathematicians and computer scientists. And there are lots of topics I didn't address, but anyway, um, well, in case you're interested, well, so some of them might be available uh, from my web page. Well, uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry for taking time. Um, um, than expect, uh, yeah, let's start end the talk. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, Professor Hasegawa, for, for a very interesting talk. Um, if anybody has any questions uh, for Professor Asagawa, please uh, feel free to unmute your mic. Um, hi, Hase, it's Steve Black here. Uh, thanks for that. That was uh, that's very interesting. Um, I was wondering if you could say anything about uh, how one should think about uh, braidings which are not symmetries in the in your sort of computational setting. Um, thank you. Um, actually, I still I don't have good. Um, the only case I can only computer science 
scenario using play. So, Syria 3 is a topological quantum computer in which the blade is a physical such structure, quite essential for robust uh, quantum computation, but uh, it's sort of quite, quite low level <laughs> stuff, and that's still not captured, can be, can't be captured by some high level plan language. But whereas um, um, we are working on some high level plan languages that it's uh, some some distance between the <laughs> uh, so so my my impression is that for high level plan language actually braiding is not quite use, useful but uh, for low level some uh, implementations um braiding can be can be useful but uh, that's but yes that, that that's all what I can say now there. I mean I, I was sort of wondering if there are if it sort of relates to concurrency questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, concurrency? Concurrency, I mean. Oh, all right. Um, okay, several people, well, even before trust my category, so, so people try using um, uh, compact closed categories for in, in, interpreting some concurrent processes like CCS and so, and so on. And even some people are pi calculus. That's, so actually, some people gave such interpretations. Um, yes, that's, and that's sort of, so they use, they all of them involve some bi directional computation information flow. So that's twice what is essential. That's, that's my impact. Is that, that, is, okay, thanks. That's what you want. Are, are there any other questions for Professor? Okay, um, if not, then um, thank you all very much for coming and thank you again, uh, Professor Asagawa for, for speaking. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>